Good morning, Card Media. It's RJ back with another video. So let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the of the day. Uh, I'm happy about this, but a little bummed as well. A little bit of both. Um, so if you remember last week, I was showing off some of the Sports Illustrated magazines I needed. I had uh, showing off all the Mike Schmidt ones. I mentioned I still needed another one because I was kind of looking through ones I had, went online to make sure how many different covers did Mike appear on. I found out there was one I didn't have, so I went ahead and ordered it. Here it is. This is from October 27th, 1980, right in the middle of the World Series, and Mike made the cover. The problem is the cover has separated from the magazine. It's very annoying. Um, so it, it, in essence, it's just a loose cover around the old magazine. So, I mean, magazines aren't, um, very expensive. I'm kind of bummed I jailed out the money, but I'm going to have to get a replacement. This, this just won't cut it. So, that's my random Mike Schmidt item of the day. Ugh. Sad about that, in a way. Today's random baseball item of the day. Just found this to be very cool. Wanted to show it off. A uh, very common thing. I shouldn't say common, but let's say not unheard of. So, a lot of major league players have family ties, meaning that a lot of players who are good in baseball will have sons who play the game, or vice versa. A lot of um, players who are great at baseball had fathers who at one time played the game, whether professionally or not, whether well or not. It's very rare you get a father and son combo who are awesome. You know, I mean, Ken Griffey Jr., was a Hall of Famer, but Ken Griffey was damn good on his own. Um, you don't get too many of those where the son and the father are both really good. Um, certainly Hall of Fame caliber is almost unheard of. Uh, like I don't think there are any Hall father and son players in the Hall of Fame. But I came across this card the other day. Let me show you the father first. This is my 1973 Topps. Gary Maddox card. Gary Maddox's rookie card. He was with the Giants. Then he came up. This is a PSA 7 that I have. It is part of my all-time great Phillies set. Um, Gary started with the Giants, but eventually came to the Phillies via trade. But here is a minor league card of Gary Maddox Jr. Here he is with the High Desert Mavericks. Did a little research, found out that was with that is with the uh, a a plus designated minor league of the Arizona Diamondbacks in the California League, and uh, this is his card. Gave just the stats from the uh, previous year. He had about a seven or eight year career in the minors. He never made it to the majors. Never even had a cup of coffee. He uh, played from ninety seven through two thousand and three, and for the final three years. Um, the Phillies uh, franchise gave him a shot. Now, he never got out of the uh, minor leagues for us. Got his highest AAA here and there, but never did make it to the major leagues. But it's kind of cool to have a Gary Maddox Jr. card when your team is the Phillies, and Gary Maddox was such a prominent player for that team. So that is my random baseball item of the day. Today's trivia question. Today's trivia question um, interesting one, I think. In 1995, the National League had its famous playoff, the Dodgers, the Brooklyn Dodgers versus the New York Giants with Bobby Thompson and the shot heard around the world, the Giants win the pennant and so forth and so on. In 1962, the rules for a National League tie were the same still, and in 1962... The Dodgers and the Giants again finished tied and had a three-game playoff. This time, both teams had relocated to the West Coast. Obviously, the uh, Dodgers to L.A. and the Giants to San Francisco. However, an interesting fact, both teams, both the Giants and uh, the Dodgers, still had one player each still on the t the, in the franchise that had appeared back in 1951. So, which two players, one for the Giants and one from the Dodgers, 
where in both of those playoff runs from in 1951 and in 1962, which are the only two players, one from each team, that did that. So send me an email with the correct answer, and you might be able to pull out this great uh, Orioles rookie kind of a thing, or Orioles star card, the Adley Rushman, uh, Gunnar Henderson doubleheader from this year's Tops, uh, the 1989 throwback style. That is what you're playing for. So if you could email me the correct answer, I will include my email in the description below. Along with the repeat of that question, you will have today and tomorrow to answer. We'll pick a winner on Sunday, all right? Good luck to everybody on that one. All right, today, what I'm showing off, uh, if you were with me on Friday, you remember I was telling, oh, I'm sorry, if you were with me on Wednesday, you remember I was talking about doing this. I got some PSA reveals this week, and I'm showing off them. Wednesday, it was all about the uh, 2023 Tops Phillies team card that I'm collecting all the to, my, to the best of my ability, the rainbows of that card. Uh, I know, like I said, I was a little bummed. I found out other collectors are doing it as well. So uh, getting some of the lower numbered varieties <laughs> could be a little difficult. But, you know, we still have fun doing it. We still do what we do, you know. All right. So today, uh, when I got past that, I'm going to show off the PSA graded cards I got back for another little PC I was running. If you recall... I mentioned Phillies no hitters, and I had picked up this awesome card, 2023 tops now, the Michael Lorenzen no hitter, and this one because it was so stinking cheap instead of PSA 10, number to 49, it was the blue parallel. I mean, I think I got this for like 10 bucks. If uh, Michael Lorenzen is not a very popular player, therefore his cards do not command a lot of value obviously but here in philly i think it was an awesome card to snag and because i got this awesome card honoring a no hitter i thought i would get all uh, a no trying to find a card of every philly's pitcher to ever throw a no hitter but specifically a card that honored the no hitter not a card not a card that just had the player on it or even a play a, a card that had him from the year he did the no-hitter, but a card that specifically honored the very no-hitter itself. So uh, the other two cards I had already previously picked up, these were ones that are not new to you if you've seen my channel before. This is the 1972 Rick Wise. This is technically just the base card from the 1972 set, but on the back, it specifically lists in that little line item there the, uh, the fact that Rick became the first hurler ever to hit two home runs while hur hurling a no-hitter. So it does, in my mind, honor the no-hitter on the card. And the other one is a card specifically there to honor the no-hitter, which is more of what I was talking about from 2020 10, from 2010 Tops. This is an insert called Peak Performance, Roy Halladay's perfect game. Uh, now, Roy Halladay did have a no-hitter in the division series in 2010, but this is his perfect game against the Marlins. This is a card specifically honoring that feat. So those three cards I already had. I also pulled out, I didn't want to get slabbed because I don't think it warrant slabs. There was a time that the Phillies did a combined no-hitter. Cole Hamill started it. Jake Diekman came in after that, Ken Giles, and then Papelbon finished it up. So these are cards of these three, those four pitchers right around the time that they uh, appeared in the no-hitter. I can't swear that each one is specifically from that year. I couldn't find four matching cards. Uh, so these things I just keep in this uh, top loaders. Uh, I'll just keep them separated uh, in that regard because I can't find a single card yet that honored that combined no-hitter. Anyway, um, <clears throat> there are four pitchers that pitched no hitters back in the uh, pre you know baseball card era and um there really hasn't been a uh, a product created after that that has gone back to honor those original philly no hitters so we're picking up with mr jim bunning in his 64 father's day perfect game so i snagged this awesome card it is the uh, 2002 finest moments to 
So from Top's Finest, the Jim Bunning autograph. Love this very cool card, on card autograph of Jim Bunning honoring his Father's Day perfect game. There you go. Because it, it actually talks about his um, no-hater with Detroit in a way, so you could say this serves a dual purpose. But again, in my mind, this is all about the Phillies' perfect game. That's the whole point of the uh, the little PC set I'm collecting. So I'm going to try and put these like in chronological order. Jim Bunning would go first, then Rick Wise. These are all going to be chronological now. <clears throat> From 1991, Terry Mulholland threw a no-hitter in 1990 for the Phillies. And this is a box bottom, uh, 1991 Fleer box bottom panel. Just says no-hitter, gives the date, shows Terry's picture, and the back is completely blank because it is a box bottom. But again, the whole point of this, it's not, the, 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 the grade was a, a stinking four. I don't care. The whole point was to get a slab card honoring the no-hitter itself, more so than the player. And that's what this card is. That's why I have it, and I'm very happy and thrilled to have it in my PC here now. Next one, from 1992 score, Tommy Green in the no-hit club. There was a lot of no-hitters in the 1991 season, and score, to their credit, Put out this awesome little no hitter club, no hit club subset honoring all the different no hitters from that year. And Tommy Green was one of those. Has the uh, box score of the game from that year, that, that time. He did walk a lot of batters. I think I think he walked like seven, seven guys. I'm not sure if it says there. Uh, I imagine it does, but it was crazy. He he, he you know he, there it is. Tommy Green. Uh, he struck out 10, but he walked seven. That's why it wasn't a, a perfect game, but there certainly was a no-hitter. So that is Tommy Green, member of the Phillies no-hit club right there. Next one, the card is an odd card because it's it's almost like a comic strip, but it does exactly what I asked of it, and that is to honor the no-hitter more so than the player. April 7th, 2003, Kevin Millwood threw a no-hitter for the uh, Phillies against the Giants. And this is a PSA 8, 2004 Bazooka Comics. So it was an insert, obviously, in the Bazooka release that year. And it honors Kevin Millwood and his no-hitter. Now, it's a cartoon. Uh, it's not really a picture of Kevin, so to, say, so to speak. But again, the whole point is not the card or the grade, but that it honors the event which is what that card does very well. This one throws me a little bit. I'm not sure if this really meets the intent, uh, but it's kind of like the um, Rick Wise. It's a, it's a different kind of a card, but honors the fact on its back. Anyway, in 2016, finest, Cole Hamill's Orange Refractor. Now, this actually, actually, I'm going, I'm going out of date, but... This is talking about Hamels pitching a no-hitter while with the Phillies, even though the card shows him on the Rangers. So it says Hamels no-hitter of July 5th, July 25th for the Phillies was the first at the expense of the Cubs in Sandy Koufax's perfect game in 1965, snapping a record for any franchise at 92-20. You know, so it was a very cool thing. Uh, and again, it shows him with the Rangers at this time. But this is his 2016 Orange Refractor, number 25. So it's kind of a cool Cal Cole Hamels card. Uh, I actually did go out of order on this one because there was another uh, Doc Halliday card that I have that I forgot to show off. And this would have been before that Cole Hamels no-hitter. From the 2013 Tops, this is an insert called Chasing History. And this one is dedicated to Doc's NLDS. Got a PSA 7. Don't care about the grade. Chasing history. Making his first postseason start. Halliday twirled the second postseason no-hitter in history. Obviously, that is no longer the case because there was a third one in the World Series. The Phillies got no-hit by the combined 
pitching staff of the Astros. Very sad about that. But a very cool card nonetheless celebrating Doc Holliday. Put that where it belongs in the chronology. And that, then you get down to Michael Lorenzen was the last time the Phillies had a no-hitter after that. So that is my stack. It is pretty much done. I might mess around with getting cards of the other no-hitting pitchers somehow in some way. Uh, so I have a complete set, but some of them probably don't have cards. They're like little-known players. Um, but that is my PC for the no-hitters. And I want to show off a couple other cards I picked up in my PC because they don't fall in anything. They're actually, one's a PSA set registry. The other technically will fall in there, and the last one's just freaking cool. So I mentioned I was going to start collecting the 1961 Golden Press cards. Why? The main reason is because they're dirt cheap, and it's got a lot of great Hall of Famers, and also because... Um, when I purchased a box from uh, Mike, um, baseball collector, you know, Mike Moynihan um, and his friend Gavin uh, a couple months ago now, they had helped Dave, Blue Jacket 66, clean out his dad's basement and they began selling off a lot of stuff and I bought the mystery box. And inside the mystery box was a ton of gold. One of the, well, a couple of the things I got were two cards from the Golden Press one of John McGraw, the other of Dazzy Vance, both Hall of Famers, obviously. So I figured I'd send them in and get graded, even though I knew they were poor and didn't care about the grades, because this is not a set I'm looking to get the highest possible um, cards for. It's not it's not my intent, mostly because you got Ruth cards in there and Cobbs and Gehrig's and things like that, cards that I'm never going to be able to afford if they came out to be PSA 10s. So that's not my intent. It's just to get them slabbed. And here you go. So I got these two slabs. I got the Dazzy Vance, which came out of PSA 2. McGraw came out of PSA 4. Again, the, the, the grade's pretty much irrelevant to me. Uh, I'm starting a set registry. These two got on the register. I think it's like 36 cards or something like that. Unimportant to me, the total number. I'll just crank it out uh, as I go. These cards... In poor condition, you can get them for about 10 to 15 bucks for the lesser no Hall of Famers. Uh, you're going to have to pay up to about $100 for the uh, larger um, Hall of Famers, the Ruths, the Gehrigs, uh, in poor grade and everything. But again, it's a really cool set, I think. I think it's just one of those uh, that everybody should have a couple cards of the uh, 61 Golden Press. And uh, those are my two. The other one I added... Um, technically, I guess I can make this part of my all-time great Phillies set because the cards in that set go way back into the T206s. So I'm never going to have all PSA 10. So there's no reason to be concerned if I have a card of a lesser quality. But I have in my collection four Mike Schmidt rookie cards. Four. One is my uh, binder of all Mike Schmidt cards. It's a loose card. It's really crappy. It's really beat to heck. So I don't care about the grade. It's in a binder, loose. The other one is my Mike Schmidt card that is part of my 1973 top set. Uh, that's my second card. Uh, that's, again, loose in a binder, a very poor quality card. I don't care. It's part of my 1973 top set. Uh, the third one I have is my PSA 7 I show off often. It's my best quality Mike Schmidt card. And it's part of my... Uh, uh, Mike Schmidt basic set registry. Uh, the last one is one I got, I had given to my nephew, and he returned it now. My nephew, I guess I gave it to him when he was about, I don't know, 10. And now he's like 25. <laughs> he's not a sports fan, so he, he returned the card to me. I didn't know what to do with it, so I, I figured I'd send it into PSA and get it graded. And it came back as a PSA 3. Which is still, you know, it's, it's, it's a low quality card, but any Mike Schmidt PSA graded card will give you some value. You know, it's at least a hundred, hundred and twenty-five dollar card. Uh, it's a second graded card. I might make this the card that goes with my um, uh, PSA set registry for the all-time greatest Phillies. Just saying. Lastly, the last card I want to show off is a re really cool card. I'm happy to say I own 
my T206. I own a T206 Honus Wagner PSA. Check that baby out. Oh, by the way, yes, it's a reprint. So this is from 1995, a company called IMT. Um, you know, it it, it kind of describes it down here, IMT, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the Wagner Estate authorized this, I suppose. I think it was in coordination with a, a book on Wagner's life that came out around that time. Uh, it's a really cool uh, reprint. I have seen Mike Moynihan has one of these, but he got it in a PSA 10. And the PSA 10, he said, goes for like $100 or so. Uh, so I'm happy to get a 9. It just looks really cool. I mean, if you put that back there. And let me get, let me get the Rushman out of the back. Let me get that out of the back there. But if you, if you put that out there and you just lay that on there. And you're staring at a T206 Wagner like that. That just, it just looks cool, doesn't it? Just, it's the kind of thing, if you're walking past it in some dealer's showcase, you're going to stop and stare because you know what that card is. And when you see one just sitting there in a PSA slab, you're taking it back for a split second, especially because this one looks, you know, nice crisp corners, nice, great, it's got great coloring and all that. Um, then you realize real quick that it's just a reprint, but it's fun for that split second to look at it and go, oh, a T206 Wagner. So when I had, I, I had an extra, I had this card in, in my collection. I think I actually purchased it off the bay, uh, or maybe I got it in somebody else's collection when I purchased a collection or whatever it was. I just thought I'd send it in for fun just to get it slabbed up. And every once in a while, I'll, I'll throw it out there and, and try and impress somebody walking by. Did you see my T206 Honus Wagner? That's right. I got a T206 Honus Wagner. Look at how beautiful it is. <laughs> that was the final card I got uh, sent to the return from PSA this week. So there you have it. So that is my video for today. Please, uh, If you enjoyed that, please consider like, subscribe, and comment to get all that jazz. I really do appreciate it. Uh, don't forget the trivias. We'll come back again on Sunday for the recap. Uh, we'll have more great trivia and prizes to give away next week as well. So stop back for more, all right? Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week. Take care.